So the newest Shutter film is out and it is called The Unheard, not to be confused with Unseen, <laughs> which we watched earlier, not to be confused with The Unseen, not which be. is <laughs> something else we reviewed this year. So Unseen, The Unseen, and Unheard, The Unheard now. Mm -hmm. Now we got to find an Unheard yes. and we can complete the set. Yeah. All right, so this is about... Now, before we get started, I will say the, the actor in this movie is non-binary. So, but the character in the movie, as far as I can tell, is a woman. So yes. we're going to be referring to that character as a she. So yes. let's just clear that shit <laughs> up right now. Um, but I, never, I guess I never outright ex ex say that this is a, sh this is a woman. <laughs> uh, but whatever it, it, it's a woman in the, in the movie yes. so alright um, we have our main character here who is played by um, the I would assume actor is, is mm -hmm. the right thing here actor who plays Glenn and Glenda yes. in the Chucky series yeah. which is what I really wanted to watch this movie because of when I looked it up even though I forgot about it when we pressed play of why I wanted to watch yeah. this. And I was sitting there the whole time like, why do I know them? Like, where are they from? And then I had to look. And no, at like, that point you were like, I don't, where is she from? And then after that you were yes. like, "Where? oh, that's where they're from. Yeah, well, because <laughs> then you were like, oh, Because wait. at first I thought it was the actress from We're All Going to the World's Fair. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But then, yeah, and then finding out that it was the actor that played Glenn, I was just like, oh, that's so cool. I definitely think that they do um, a really great job at, with the acting in this. You know, that's definitely, I would say that's probably my favorite part is their performance. But sure. we'll get into everything. Sure. So this is a very competently made film, right? Yeah. Like the direction and the acting and the, the lighting and all that stuff is on point. The music is actually really good. So all the technical aspects are good. Um, as far as what the films, before we get into like our opinion on it, what the film is about is there is this young woman who undergoes this experimental surgery, um, to have her hearing restored. She has been almost completely deaf since she was eight years old. She got meningitis, went into a coma for six months. And when she woke up, um, the majority of her hearing was gone. Um, and she wears hearing aids and she can kind of here ish like nothing really mm -hmm. um but some sounds but nothing where she can decipher anything um and so she has this experiment and she then goes off to this like secluded area where her dad has this house and this is the house her mom had disappeared from when she was a kid um and uh, when she gets there, she starts to hear things like not only real life stuff, but maybe something supernatural. Mm -hmm. um, and there's people going missing in this small town. And, and um, so that's the premise of the film. Uh, overall, <clears throat> I'm pretty blah on this movie. Mm -hmm. And the only reason is because number one, it's too long mm -hmm. for its own good. It's very repetitious, right? And the film isn't interesting enough and it doesn't have enough going on in it to be two hours and five minutes long. Like, mm -hmm. they could have easily done this exact film in an hour and 20 minutes. There's like 40 minutes of, of looped, recycled material where I'm like, there's a chick hanging out in a house. She's hearing things. She's, you know... Wondering what she's hearing. She's talking to a couple people. Loop. Loop. Mm -hmm. Loop. Yeah. And it's like... And it never elevates. It yeah. never... It, it always feels like it's on the same wavelength the whole time for yeah. me. Like, there's a creepiness. Because the film kind of goes for this, like, broadcast signal intrusion mm -hmm. um, elements. Broadcast is way trippier and yes. way more of a payoff. Even though I know that movie kind of ends on a what the fuck. And people were like, what the hell did that movie just mean? But mm -hmm. I was intrigued at least. Mm -hmm. As to where this film is like 
where it culminates to the climax is just like generic yeah seen it a trillion times nothing interesting and you waited two hours to get to this place and you're like oh it's just the same traditional bullshit nothing interesting and they don't play off of the hearing stuff and all that like at all i want to hear your take uh sorry i have a lot more to say but uh, i'll stop there because i feel like i'm talking too much go ahead no well no i mean i agree with everything that you said i think that um you know like you said in the beginning it's really competently made the performances are really you know they're solid from everybody and then um you know from the lead i think is just obviously the best because we're following you know that character around but I was also fairly bored during the movie. I really, and it was a shame because I'm a big fan of like, there's some cool stuff that happens with like VHS tapes and yeah. that's sort of, I guess, the broadcast signal intrusion type thing. And I really liked those elements, but I think that they were not utilized properly because like, as you said, nothing really ever felt like it was escalating. No. Um, and normally, like, I don't have a problem with subtlety. I just feel like there could have been more creepiness, more maybe questioning the, you know, like reliable narrator type of stuff going on because I feel like there's some setup in the story that would really lend that part and it wasn't, it was explored, but it just wasn't explored enough. And I also feel like the movie doesn't have enough characters um for the length of the length of the film Absolutely. and for kind of what they were <laughs> attempting i think that they're but i i understand why it was set up with minimal characters there's supposed to be like an isolation feel and i think that was i guess accomplished to an extent but from my perspective at least i just think that expanding the cast could have given um just a little bit more going on you know like there would have been more interesting things happening to have more people interacting with each other and there could have still been some really high strangeness and weirdness which is another part that i feel like the film you know part of the story was trying to address was high strangeness and i just think it didn't get weird enough (laughs) you know like i wanted it to get really weird and trippy and um it didn't so it was kind of a disappointment but yeah that's so I, I, I think that the biggest sin that this film um, commits is that for a two hour long film, almost everything in the movie is underdeveloped, mm. which is like, how, how, mm. when you have something, cause this movie actually kind of reminds me also of another movie called the block Island sound, mm. um, which has similarities to this film. Um, with like the magnetics and all this stuff and the sound that people are hearing. Um, but like with this movie, um, you have like certain characters that are in this that have these kinds of like mysteries surrounding them. And there's even like, like a potential romantic thing going Mm -hmm. on over here and whatever. And like, that's not very much developed right the intrigue between behind the person who's doing because like never really a, it, so there's like a killer taking girls in the movie and we see like missing posters and we see someone get like abducted and killed but somehow during the two hour runtime where there's like some killer in town and she's hearing all these things there was such a disconnect between those two stories mm-hmm. of the killer and the missing people and then the like sound in the house. Yeah. Even though there was like elements on the outside, they felt like they were part of what was going on in the VHS stuff and mm-hmm. not attached to the killer. And I had figured that this sound stuff was going to ultimately lead to what it led to because it's so obvious and expected. And you're like, Okay, so that's just generic fucking like this is we do this and this person this person's it and and this is why and this is the sound. But I never felt that the sound stuff paid off at all. Like I don't even yeah. know what any of that was. It it doesn't have a payoff to where you're like, "Oh, she was hearing the sounds because like there's yeah, nothing like that." But also never in the film did I in like at any point and I think it was just because of how disconnected it felt. Did I ever feel like 
she was in danger from the killer who was out there abducting girls. Like sure. I never felt that presence. You know yeah. how like in Halloween, like as soon as Lori goes to the Myers house, mm-hmm. Michael is a looming threat. Yes. The entirety of the film, even yeah. though his main focus throughout almost over half the runtime of the film is on Annie. Yeah. Right? And Annie's the one who's really in danger for the majority of the film. Watch my video on Annie's the real target. <laughs> um, but that, I, you feel the presence of Michael the entire film. Yes. This, I kept forgetting that there was a guy out there sure. killing people. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, this person. Yeah. Right? And that is It did bad. feel very disconnected. Yeah. And she should have been, you know, because they were going for this vulnerable, you know, isolated, hearing loss, you know, all that kind of, those elements um, put her in a really vulnerable position. And I did not 100% feel like, like you said, that she was ever really in harm's way. Um which just takes down the stakes and it makes you not as engaged in the film because you don't really have something to root for, like her survival, you know? Um, Yeah, yeah, I I think that, like, as you said, for a two-hour and five-minute film, (laughs) things are kind of shockingly underdeveloped. Um, But the other aspects of the film, like, the shots and the direction and the acting, like and the, even the writing, like the dialogue and stuff. I liked all of that yeah. fine. Yeah. Like I think it was, as we said, really competent, but it's just the story that was really lackluster. Things so. are underdeveloped and there's no real true payoff to any of the things being set up. There's multiple characters set up here to have intrigue mystery surrounding them Mm -hmm. and ultimately those don't lead to anything we don't get any deeper explanations or connections to things where you're saying like oh that's why this person did that Mm -hmm. or this is why she's hearing these voices or whatever sure like it just kind of happens and you go okay generic and then it ends and it ends yeah, right ends and you're like fast. oh okay for a two-hour movie this ends abruptly yeah and it, and i called it too like as soon as she did the thing and i was like the end yeah and it was like okay there we are anyway um so it's just i don't know man like i really wanted to like this movie mm-hmm. and i didn't hate it i just found myself to be kind of just Bored isn't the right word, just Mm -hmm. unengaged. Mm -hmm. That being said, I remained engaged in the hopes that I would become engaged because I felt like it was well made. I I really liked her, right? And and I I was rooting for her the whole time, Mm -hmm. but only because she felt real. And not so much because the character was so engaging. Yeah, and that's why I think that speaks a lot to the performance. Yeah, you know, um, because everyone just, does a good job. It's something so like natural and yeah. authentic feeling. Yeah, that I really liked. But yeah, I was I was fairly bored. I, I definitely would use that word. Like okay. I, I like what you were saying about being like like you stayed engaged because you want something to happen. Because I definitely was like still watching it like. <sighs> Hoping, like, okay, maybe the final act, there's going to get, like, something. Some twist. Something crazy. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, overall, yeah, I just was kind of like, hmm. So, I would not recommend this film. No. I would not. Yeah. I just, I just really wish that there was something to it. Like, watch The Night House, right? Mm. Like, She's yeah. hearing things and she's seeing things and there's this tension, this yes. build and, tension. and everything, you know, it, it, it builds, it builds, it builds. And then it climaxes to a payoff where you're like, oh, like, oh, that's what's going on. Oh, cool. And, there's right? also and that's like the a... same with like the lodge or yes. any of these movies where there's this tension because like take something 
take something like the VHS 2 segment directed by Adam Wingard where he gets a new eye implant, mm. right? And he couldn't see before. He puts the eye in and the thing's recording and, and he starts to see demons, right? Mm. This segment is like 20 minutes long. This this builds his character. It builds suspense. It has climax. It tells you why. Yeah. And it finishes. And it does it in 20 minutes. This movie has two hours to do what, what the VHS 2 segment does in 20 minutes. And the VHS 2 segment is much more successful in everything that it attempts to do. Yeah. Well, and the thing, like, with mentioning, like, the the, um, the night house and stuff, like, there's an emotional complexity to the story that is missing from this. Yeah. Um, which, but I do think that there was, that there could have been an emotional complexity, you know? Absolutely. There's a lot going on with the Because they have the actors to pull it off. They do. And it just needed to be developed more. Yes. And there needed to be more, like, connections to things. And um, and how many questions you have? Because I've got a bunch. I don't I know what the hell is going on I with the house ton. across the way. Like, oh I don't know. God, I, know. I don't understand any I of this I was super stuff. confused. And just about, like, the pacing, right? Like, there's, you know, sometimes it's nice to draw things out and to, like, you know, stretch something for an effect of some kind. But there's also, like, something to be said about you know, telling a story and getting concise. something across. Yeah, yeah, being concise. And, uh, yeah, that's just, that was a a failure, I think, in this part. But, yeah, I have a, I have a ton of questions, so I don't really feel I don't really know what was going on with the kid that she, made, that she knew when she was a kid that she's hanging out with a little bit. Yes, like I don't know. he has either. stuff going on in his house yeah. that I'm like, how does this connect? Right, I know. Like, what is I know. happening? Like, I don't understand any of that stuff. I don't, I don't understand the, the, the sound through the floor. No, me either. Like, I understand what happens with the marking, right? Sure. But, like, how? Because that doesn't, that doesn't play into, like, how it affects the situation. Right, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm not getting it. Neither am I, like, so I, I don't know. I understand the significance of the spot. Yes. Right? But, like, I don't understand why that ultimately leads to what it leads to. I, I just, I'm super, super confused. And trust me, I paid perfect attention to this movie the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's just some of these things, I got nothing. Yeah. I got nothing for it. Yeah. And that shouldn't happen. No. Not in a two-hour movie. With very little characters. Because you can guess who the killer is. Since there's only like three characters in the whole fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. This is as I was telling Kaylee. This is the this is the freaking scene from Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> yeah. When he reads Owen's little book. And he's like. Owen. Oh, it was a murder mystery that was three pages long. <laughs> with two characters. One of which was dead on page two. Yeah. The guy in the hat killed the other guy in the hat. <laughs> Kinda. That's what it felt like. It's like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, but put more characters in this movie if you're going to try to make it a mystery. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was meaning earlier when I was like, there, could, there should have been more characters, I think, to add. Just add silly. A lot, but yeah. It's just like you watch a movie. Imagine watching like a Knives Out and with like two people. people. <laughs> and you're, like, <laughs> and you're like, okay. And then one of them's them. dead in like 20 minutes into the movie yeah. and you're like, Hmm, who, <laughs> who could have possibly it? done it? Yeah. So, I don't know, man. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, that was a really long review, but I feel like everything we said was justified. Yeah. So, so that's, that's that. I'm that's done. That. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not a recommendation, but yeah, we said it all. We watched it. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs>